Niggas screw their face up at me on some real shit, son, they don't want beef. I cock that, aim that shit out the window. When I spray that in the shell, let fill my... <laughs> you gotta do something, man. Something special. What up, Fight World? It's your boy, Ego. And I'm back with some more boxing. So, I gotta talk about the man. <laughs> 50 Cent. g net and SMS Promotions. Now, in case you haven't heard, 50 Cent and SMS Promotions just filed for bankruptcy in the Connecticut courts. Shout out to TMZ Sports. I believe they were the ones that broke this story. And I can't really say that I'm surprised with this. Now, 50 in the past has showed to be a pretty good, pretty solid businessman. He usually gets in himself into good endeavors, came in the game, and he was doing crazy numbers with Get Rich or Die Trying, his album. Then he had a follow-up album that had some success, The Massacre. Uh, got into movies, the Vitamin Water. He's doing a show that's that kind of spawned Empire, the other show that's popular on Fox, different things like that, his show called Power. And the SMS promotions out of all of his endeavors was one that never really quite clicked to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, from the moment he announced he was in boxing, me as a fan, I'm you know what I mean I'm a hip hop head and I, I like fifties music and stuff like that, and I love boxing, so I was like, this is good, this could be a good thing, and then as I started to see, I didn't really understand how they were handling their fighters. Like it, it seemed like I don't know, maybe he was too busy. I don't really know what it was, but your York is Gamboa. He was on the shelf. Billy Dib, he had he was probably the most active, and he's not really a big name in the states, Australian. And then he stepped up and fought Gradovich and lost, and then rematched him and lost again. So he lost his title. Gamboa finally fought, and he fought Crawford, which was a great fight to me. It was the fight of the year that particular year. But the only downside is, although he was doing good in the first half of the fight, he ended up getting knocked down like four times and getting stopped. So he lost. He was no longer undefeated. Andre Durrell, when he was with SMS Promotions, wasn't fighting at all. And then Durrell leaves SMS Promotions, and then he starts fighting routinely. He starts fighting pretty actively. And then recently, we just seen him with Al Heyman, I believe he's with. And he just fought James DeGale, which was a good fight. So, I don't know what it was. I don't know. if I think maybe 50 came in the game expecting it to be like... I don't know. I felt like he treated it like the rap game. In boxing and like hip-hop in music, there are a lot of similarities in terms of the style. Like, I see these guys like Danny Garcia, Adrian Broner. I could tell they're influenced by hip-hop. and You know what I mean? The culture of hip-hop. You could tell by their dress, their demeanor, um, the people they have in their circle and stuff like that. But boxing is different. Even though there's a lot of similarities. And you know me you see Tupac and Mike Tyson hanging together. Broner and... Justin Bieber's and all these people with, with Mayweather, different stuff like that. You see these things in Lil Wayne with Mayweather, but the business is a little bit different. And I think 50 came in with kind of the wrong approach. He he treated it like, like this was the music, like he was beefing. I think he was talking shit about Oscar De La Hoya and stuff like that. You don't want to burn your bridges and get blackballed in any market. And just because you're successful in movies or music doesn't necessarily give you crossover success into any other business venture. Like, like let's say Boxing Ego. I mean, I just hit 10 million views, 20,000 subs. So thank you guys for all the support. But let's say I, I get into soccer and I'm like, soccer ego, you know what I mean? And I, I, I create a branch for soccer. That doesn't automatically make me impactful in that. Some people, you got to earn your stripes in that new market. You know what I mean? People are like, what does what he know about soccer? He don't know soccer. Give them a red card. Get them the fuck out of here. You know what I mean? They don't know. So you still got to prove your your worth in the new market. So I never really fully understood the 50 Cent SMS promotions business model. Like the fighters weren't active. The, the fight cards that they were putting on weren't really mega cards. So like I said, I can't, I can't really see. I can't say I was, I was shocked with this. And then to top that off, which I didn't cover is James Kirkland, another inactive fighter that I forgot about mentioning with SMS Promotions. He just got, like, destroyed by Canelo. 
You know what I mean? He, he he made it a game effort, but he showed heart. But he still, you know what I mean? In the end, he got knocked out by Canelo. So it's like, I don't know, man. You got to get a talent scout and get some 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 talent that's not gonna just be passe or or beaten beaten bad in your roster. You know what I'm saying? Like Gamboa, he lost when he did lose to Crawford. He lost bad. And what I mean is you were undefeated and you got knocked out four times and stopped. That's that's pretty bad if you were undefeated. Then same thing with Kirkland. Kirkland lost to the Sheeta, so he's been stopped before, but that was his sole loss. And it wasn't like when he spun around from Canelo. You know what I mean? Canelo, I would say, that would, like you could see he still had his senses in the Ishida fight. He was just getting mopped up for whatever reason. But with Canelo, Canelo spun him around and he was, he was out of it. So... That's the other thing. These fighters were taking bad losses. Billy Dibb, I thought he, he it was a bad loss to the to Gradovich in the first fight, stuff like that. So I never understood that. Now you look at Floyd Mayweather. Mayweather promotions to me, and I'm not trying to hate, is not much different in terms of I haven't seen that star power. Like I think Mayweather promotions, like they if they had even like a Keith Thurman, a Felix Verdejo, uh, Vasil Lomachenko, Earl Spence Jr. Saddam Ali, like a guy like that, I'd be like, okay, this person is keeping Mayweather promotions alive. You know what I mean? But there's a lot of guys, you know what I mean? Badu Jack did good for himself, but he's also got stopped. Uh, Jay Leon Love, he's he's trying to come back. He got stopped. Different stuff like that. So, I mean, as a business, you, you got to get a lot of, or try your best to get people with high ceilings. Like Mayweather promotions, the, the good thing about Floyd is, He's the highest paid athlete. So even if uh, Mayweather Promotions isn't really shaping up or he doesn't have the talent, he's still remaining undefeated as a fighter. So it, it kind of, he's under Mayweather Promotions part, you know what I mean? That's his banner. So his name is attached to that. And since Floyd Mayweather is so good and still undefeated, it, it helps his brand, you know what I mean? Because they still have the highest paid the most successful or pound for pound number one dude under Mayweather Promotions banner, which is Mayweather himself. So in that situation, it's a little bit different. Like 50 Cent, if 50 Cent was an undefeated fighter for 20 years and he was fighting under his own banner of SMS Promotions, then that may help it stay afloat. So I don't know, man. Hold on, I'm getting text messages. Let me turn this off. So that's basically it with 50 Cent. Filing bankruptcy, SMS promotions. I don't know if, if he's out the game or if they're just trying to do. Sometimes there's different reasons to file bankruptcy. Sometimes you just, um, maybe you call it quits and fold. Sometimes you do it to restructure. I mean, there's different people. I think Donald Trump, I don't know the exact amount off the top of my head without Googling it, but he's he's loaded, he's rich, but he's filed bankruptcy numerous times so there's different chapters of bankruptcy and there's different reasons to file so i don't know if 50 cent is just like folding but i do know the business and i know i understand the business of it is you gotta have you gotta have winners you gotta have people who are winning and in any business this is boxing this is kmart this is any business you have to be competitive and you have to be able to compete with the competition and put on good cards and good events and you know what I mean just overall have that integrity and credibility with your brand and take more wins than you do losses. Not every, it's 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 a proven fact. No company is taking nothing but wins. Top rank, Golden Boy, Heyman, nobody's taking a hundred percent wins because I know for a fact there's top rank cars that like you know what I mean Rios Alvarado three. I went to that. I would say that was a bust. You know what I mean? That didn't do probably as good as it could have done based on the type of fight. So you take wins, you take losses. It, it comes with the business, but you got to make sure your wins outweigh your losses. And and that's sometimes hard to do depending on who you have in your team. But you can't keep, like like I said, he had 50 Cent had a lot of fighters on the shelf. SMS promotion fighters weren't fighting frequently. And then on top of that, when they were fighting the, the biggest fights of their careers at that time or whatever, or just big fights, then a lot of them end up losing. So again, that's that's just your stock drops. We know how boxing fans are. Boxing fans are fickle. So as soon as you lose, you're a bum, you're overrated, you're garbage. It don't matter. Like, let's say I'm a fighter. I could be undefeated for 10 years straight, and then I get knocked out 
then everyone's like, oh, Ego, I knew he was overrated. He's been overrated. Even if I lost to the best fighter, even if I lost to, like, Klitschko or something, you know what I mean? They they wouldn't care. They would just say, oh, he was overrated. He never fought. That's the modern age of boxing fans. So, I mean, it's it's a cold, the cold part about the game, but that's why you have to make sure you have the right team around you, the right talent around you to help you. Because even Golden Boy is struggling a bit more so than in the past because a lot of fighters that were working with them are no longer working with them. But the difference is they still have guys like Canelo who, who they're matching with the right fights. And he, you know I mean? His stock is, um, <clears throat> is still growing and his brand is still growing as a result. You know what I mean? He got a, he's just coming off a knockout and he may get a Canelo Cotto fight later this year. So, I mean, Golden Boy still winning, but SMS promotions, a lot of their events didn't do the numbers that they were doing. But see, this other pe thing, and I'll close with this. A lot of people are comparing this to Jay-Z. I don't think it's the same because Jay-Z, it's it's different when you have someone who who kind of came in before you. When someone comes in before you, you can learn from their mistakes. So Jay-Z also being a smart businessman, he didn't come in the same way as 50. 50 came in attacking De La Hoya and, you know what I mean, trying to bully people and bully the game like he did with rap. Jay-Z didn't do that. Other thing is you can learn from, you're like, oh, okay, he filed for bankruptcy. That shows you. Another rapper who ventured off into into the boxing arena filed for bankruptcy. So it kind of warns you, like, if there's a YouTube channel, a boxing channel before me, and they went out of business or something, I can learn from their mistakes because they made the mistakes before me. And the other thing is that Jay-Z's approach just seems, his business model seems different. And... The fact that he's dabbled with sports directly, like basketball, and he represents basketball players, I think there'll be a little bit, their situation's a little bit different. Plus, like I said, my main point in this whole video is you gotta keep the talent around you. Rock Nation signed Andre Ward, someone who was on the number two pound for pound list. You know what I mean? They signed Miguel Cotto, somebody who could sell with a decorated resume, a deep resume. So, these are power moves. Like, these are people, they even try to get Jennings, but I think something happened and that fell through. But um, that's the thing. Just with that, to me, and I like the SMS fighters, you know what I mean? I, I don't have no problem with Kirkland or Gamboa, but, I mean, would you compare Kirkland's skill set to Andre Ward's skill set? Hell no. So, again, you can't compare Kirkland to Ward skill set-wise. They're both inactive. But who would you expect to come back and fight a smarter fight? Andre Ward's been inactive. Do you think he's going to come out and and gas out in the first round? You know what I mean? And throw everything he got and then have Paul Smith destroy Andre Ward? You know what I'm saying? It's just not likely. So it's it's who you keep on your team and, and how you build. So that's it. Let me know what you think. Make sure you like my video. As always, hate, comment, and subscribe. Till next video, it's Ego signing off.